love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel coverage on Pluralock. This is a very interesting uh, company in the cybersecurity space, valued right now at about uh, 13 million US, very small company, doing very, very big things. We will be talking to the CEO this week. Uh, I'd like you to submit your questions to me on this video. This will be a precursor to that to interview with the CEO, Ian Patterson, which I think is going to be a uh, a not to miss interview. Uh, I have some very pointed questions for the CEO um, with regard to the current goings on, the current disconnect between the happenings at Pluralock, what they're trying to do with their business, um, and and the obvious disconnect between what's going on in the stock market. I, I'm of the impression that companies can do a lot of very very good things for a very long time without getting any type of favor or acknowledgement in the stock market. Furthermore. I think that is more commonplace than people give credit to. What I mean by that is if we look at the positives that Pluralock is providing with regard to their cost-cutting initiatives, with regard to their margin expansion and their um, uh, um, insistence on cross-selling into critical services businesses, which they have proven out that they are very good at doing. And I have no reason to believe that uh, those um, uh, initiatives and in winning new business are not going to continue for the company. That That's just inevitable. Knocking on the door to some pretty amazing with the with the use of their top end revenue that they've been able to grow quarter over quarter, year over year, sequentially here. Pluralock is knocking on the door to being a very, very powerful company. And so when we look at an anemic revenue of 13 million, it just doesn't seem to equate when we're looking at a company that's doing business with the who's who um, in in cybersecurity, some of the largest companies in the world, uh, Pluralock does business with, and once they get in on those businesses, they are retained indefinitely. So when you're looking at a technology sector in general that has run away from itself here in 2024, one of two sectors in 2024 that's actually profitable, which is actually propping up the stock market. Um, to everyone's surprise, when you look below the surface, it's really not quite as attractive as as people would suggest that it is with the markets making all-time high. But Pluralock serves a niche uh, sub-sector of the technology space in cybersecurity that, my friends, I don't think is going anywhere. Uh, furthermore, by Ian's admission, when he talks about the opportunity that's made uh, possible for a company like Pluralock, who just for all intents and purposes, I will call a small company doing big things, okay, does have a place at the table and actually has more often than not a chance to win business right alongside some of the larger cybersecurity uh, companies out there like Palo Alto and, um, and the like. So CrowdStrike, some of the larger companies, but he said, you know, it's not really like that. It's not like the larger companies win the lion's share of the business. Uh, there's so much business to be had that companies like Pluralock, and it's indicative when you look at their financial summary that their ability to win new business and win very sizable contracts with state and local governments, as well as federal governments, as well as uh, institutions out there it is impressive enough. The, the question that you has to have to ask is, what are they doing to leverage that strategic advantage that they have in the space? Um, how is it that they leverage their opportunity in the cybersecurity space to win new business? And how is it that they can use that new business to expand upon their margins? Well, look no further than their financial statements. The last one that was released was very, very telling. And I think a lot of people are sleeping on this opportunity, which I think could be a huge mistake if you like to make money in the stock market. Um, Pluralock is worth a, a look. Now, you, you guys understand companies like CrowdStrike and Palo Alto, they do exist. When was the last time you were ever privy to a company named Pluralock, right? And that is the whole niche on the Independent Investor Channel is to highlight these areas that I think Pluralock needs or requires a second look to the trained investor eye. And you can see by the onboarding of the new um, uh, uh, CFO that 
their ability to cost cut and their ability to transform their business from some legacy hardware business that has been quite frankly impressive and enough to garner a higher valuation than 13 million in the marketplace anyway but their ability to use that existing network of 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 existing clients as well as new clients that they're able to cross sell is nothing short of of magnificent and it it is worth the investor's look to Pay attention to the margin increase, but more importantly, where those margins are being won over. Okay, look at where that money is being made, and their critical services business is something that I will ask Ian on Wednesday about, and, and hopefully he can provide would be share owners in Pluralock here buying the company at anemic prices, trading it. You know, twenty five cents U.S. is is absolutely laughable when you talk about a company that's knocking down multi million dollar contracts one after another. Um, they are winning special services businesses now. Look, I expect that the next quarter and the subsequent quarters in review of this company are continuing to show strength in those areas. If they do not, then then it's for naught. But what we are able to do is look at the trends that are established by evaluating the financials of past and projecting where they could potentially go, put those together with the statements that are offered by the CEO, and, and look to monitor the story as, as it comes. Guys, I'll be the first to report out on the company when they're able to provide some sort of color and updates on contracts that are won. Um, cost cutting initiatives that they have engaged in, which you know it is very apparent in the financial statements uh, with regard to the cost savings that they've been able to employ. Uh, Ian has doubled down on that and talk about how important their um, new CFO has been to the company. But we will continue to update you on those updates. But for right now, the company is getting absolutely no loaf discredited. At a $13 million market cap, not a lot of attention, not a lot of shares traded. And for a company that's making top-end revenue of $70 million, let me repeat, $70 million, I, I think this company is due for a, a re-rate of significant uh, portions. And a, a re-rate in the company only means that we are moving the needle in line with a company that is generating some impressive numbers uh, on the financials, it just has not been reflected thus far in the stock price. So it's going to be great. Uh, leave your comments at the bottom of this video specific for Ian. If you have those specific questions, uh, I will make sure and comb through those and uh, pay those forward to the CEO. Uh, that interview should post Wednesday evening of this week. So I, just as a precursor to that opportunity, guys, the plural lock story does continue. The coverage does continue and will continue to report out on the positive progress that I have no reason to believe will not continue into subsequent quarters as we continue to cover the, the, the company and, and continue to be a long-term uh, supporter and share owner in Pluralock uh, as they look to uh, make their mark in the cybersecurity addressable market, a market that I don't think anybody's going anywhere uh, on. Uh, I, I think it, it is here to stay. I, I don't think we are going to live in a world where cybersecurity isn't at the forefront of institutions and their uh, um, in their budgets and, and the spend that they make to try to protect themselves and their critical infrastructure. Guys, if you appreciate the content coming through, leave your comments at the bottom of the video, both for this video, if you heard something you liked, or if you want me to convey something to Ian on the interview on Wednesday, I will do that. I appreciate you guys' continued support of the channel, and good luck in your investment future. <music>